Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Hi, Bindu. Hello, Anita. Hi, Pramod. Hi, Sagar. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I see a lot of people coming in. That's wonderful. Good evening. All right, so we are just going to begin in a few moments. <clears throat> and you can already see on my screen that I have a guest today. <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone to the Knowledge Happy Hour. We are, have started this initiative uh, starting from 1st of April, that was yesterday. We had our first live session. And today's live session is very special because I have a special guest with me. Um, and welcome, Karen. I think I'm muted. Am I? Oh, there I am. Okay. Hi, Sanya. Nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to meet you too, Karen. And I will just, for all our guests today, I will introduce um, Karen to all of you. Uh, Karen is a president of International Image Institute, and uh, she is also an international award-winning image consultant and author, a media expert. She has been in this industry for more than, if I'm not wrong, Karen, 34, 35 years? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually 36, 36 years wow. now. Okay, yeah. so 36 years, yes. So. We have an industry veteran today with us, and um, she has been um, the past president of AICI, and a lot of you know what AICI is. It's Association of Image Consultant International. She has been past president of AICI, as well as past president of Canada Chapter. She has been the VP of AICI International Education uh, for four years consecutive, right? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she also, um, you know, coined the phrase that we all use in our day to day communication, all image consultants who are here today. Uh, hello to all of you. <laughs> so the phrase that we all use, the ABC of image that was uh, coined by Karen herself. She actually took the core competencies and divided them into the appearance, behavior and communication. Um, trained in more than, I think, 15 countries all over the world, and her products are used in, and tools and resources, books are read, used uh, by image consultants and image professionals in more than 80 countries. So today we have Karen, and she will be talking about raising your wife. And yes, on that note, welcome. I would like to invite you. Welcome. Welcome to the today's knowledge. Happy hour, Karen, and hand me it over to you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks, Sonia. Okay, so yeah, energy is really important to me, and I love anything to do with being um, going, going beyond where we are right now. And especially in today's climate, it's something that you know we could probably. I know I certainly can do with reminding myself of my tips of of how to um, you know how to keep things positive and moving forward as opposed to as opposed to, uh, to backwards. So I'm going to I have uh, a few slides that I can um, I can share with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, so yeah, today's talk is on Raise Your Vibe. And so I'm going to go through four sections. So the first part is the mind-body connection. And then we're, I'm going to cover about, you know, how we are energy systems. And then um, getting into more uh, the how, what we can do to move into our potential and a formula for change. So whenever we're, we feel stuck or we find ourselves spiraling downwards, we can, we can bring ourselves um, out of that. So one of the things is that when we have emotions, whenever we feel anything, emotions cause chemicals to go through all the cells of our body, through every part of our body. And the chemicals that go through the body are in alignment with that particular thought or feeling that we're having. So if you think about it, if the, 
if the thought or feeling that we're having <clears throat> is stress related, then the chemicals going to the body are related to stress, which are not healthy for us. If, if the thought that we're having or the feeling is a positive one, then the chemicals going through the body are more life enhancing. We actually have 75 trillion cells in the body. So, and every cell, the cells are programmed or they, they receive, every, every cell receives different types of uh, chemicals. So if we're, if we're used to really thinking positive a lot of the time, then that means our body needs more cells to receive the positive life enhancing chemicals. But if we find ourselves thinking more negative or stress or feeling more stress more of the time, then the body actually has more cells to receive those stress chemicals. So this kind of can explain why if we're used to thinking one way we, and we want to think more positive or feel better, why it might be challenging is because the cells in our body are actually, um, they're actually, re they're, they're receiving the, the chemicals. They only know to receive the chemicals that are stress related. They don't, there's not enough cells to receive the chemicals that are life enhancing. So, but there are ways to change that, thank goodness. Okay, so what this means is, if we're having really healthy, positive, um, you know, high vibration emotions, then the cells that are being created are also very healthy cells where we get to live longer and we get to be healthier. Okay, so along with this, so when you think about the cells going through the body, 75 trillion cells in the body, and of course, a lot of them in the brain, but really the same cells are throughout their entire body. So we think about it as the brain is hardwired, but really our whole body is wired. And we are wired, each one of us is wired to see things as either a threat or a reward. So, and, and again, this is our programming. So, you know, we might know people that they instantly jump to the negative or the, pessim or the pessimistic thought is like, oh, what's wrong with this? And so they might see things more of, as, as a threat and other people might see the positive things. They might be, be more optimistic. So they tend to see the positive in something or that they're more optimistic or they see things as a reward. If we see something as a threat, then the chemicals going through the body are chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline, which are related to stress. And now there are times where we need to perceive a threat. So right now there is a world pandemic that is a threat. So we definitely will have some of this. So of course, what we're going to do when there's a threat is do whatever we can to alleviate that threat. The positive of it is that we'll take steps to protect ourselves, to save ourselves. But when the threat is no longer there, like if, if we're doing everything we can, then it can be detrimental to our health to continue to see things as, you know, as a threat or a bigger threat than maybe they actually are. So, um, so we can actually, we can actually govern, you know, how big of a threat we see things, even though the threat might be real. Well, we'll get into a little bit, a little in a little while, why we might want to change this. All right. If we see, uh, events or something as a positive or as a reward, then we have these really blissful, happy chemicals going through our body, like endorphins, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. So those are all really nice chemicals to have. Now, you know, we, we, we um, talk about thoughts, but, and we can think something, but the, actually the feeling is more important than the thought and the feeling can dominate. Uh, but a way to change the feeling sometimes could be to change the thought because the, it, it's, you know, we can say, oh, don't feel that way, but that chances are we're going to feel that way. So, but if we change the thinking, then that can help the emotion start to change. So, uh, but yeah, the feelings, feelings tend to be more powerful than, than thoughts. So the, the way it works is when we change our thoughts, that actually can change the chemicals. And by thoughts, I'm also putting in feelings there. So when we change our thoughts or, which change with, or our feelings, that changes the feeling chemicals going to the body. This actually changes the structure of our brain because as the cells receive that chemical, there is a synapsis that happens or electrical charge that happens. And it actually goes into the nucleus and and changes the chemistry of that cell. So our emotions actually change the chemistry of our entire body. 
uh, you might be familiar with the work done by Dr. Moto in Japan. He has a book called Water. And here are examples of water crystals. So the first, uh, the first slide that we see, the first half, is the water looks a little bit murky. So, we, and this water has was criticized. <laughs> the second water crystal you can see looks much healthier, much nicer. And this uh, water was um, received gratitude. So just the the speaking or the thinking or the feeling even towards water can change the molecular structure, can change the the crystal. Um, you know, how the, the very uh, structure of the water. So if you think about it, we're made up of about two thirds water. Our thinking, feeling words really have an impact on our bodies. And what the good news is, bliss is actually our natural and optimal state. The prefrontal cortex is, is loaded with opiate receptors. And that is a really, that is a blissful, you know, very high level chemical. So that's the good news is we all, we all do have that. So maybe it's just a matter of making them work more. <laughs> so now to get into a little bit of you as an energy system. So we talked about cells and cells carry electric charges, of course, because of the chemicals that are going through the cells. And so because, and so that means the body, your body as a whole has an electric charge. And of course, now we know with quantum physics that everything is vibrating energy. And when you break, um, you know, uh, molecules down into this, in, at, into atoms, electronics, subatomic particles, scientists have found that atoms are only 0.00001% pure matter. Um, now, this what's interesting, and it's like this is a little bit like wow, is that when scientists were researching the you know, at atoms and electrons, they, so it was a, it was like empty space, but when they focused their attention on, on a particular area, then that's where an electron would appear. And then it would disappear. And then they would look at another area and an electron would appear. So they found that electrons appeared wherever they focused their attention. So the scientists actually became part of the experiment because because just by the observing so this is called the observer method they found that wherever they put their attention the atoms electrons changed so if you think about what this means for us that we're all energy we're energy systems and wherever it is that we put our attention is that's what that creates that creates that can actually create matter so each of us sends out um, these electrical charges or vibrations. So, you know, we have our physical body, but of course, as energy or electrical systems, our energy and electricity goes far beyond just the physical, physical body. So the vibrations that we're sending out, of course, if you, if, you know, if you think about this, if something's vibrating, whatever is around it will start vibrating in a simil similar way or we'll, we'll pick up on those vibrations. We even have expressions like, I feel your vibe or you know, or, um, you know, we're on the same vibration. So there's a real reason for that. And whatever it is what, that we vibrate, that's what we get. And so this is, everyone's probably heard of the law of attraction. So what we're vibrating with is what we attract. Because our vibration, you know, if you, you know, go backwards to this, our vibration um, is it all, go, you know, it, the chemicals going through the body that creates a, the, a different physical body, the, but it's also, um, it's also electrical. So it's just incredible to me. So the law of attraction is whatever we focus on, we tend to attract. So we can, we can choose, of course, what we focus on. So what this means is thoughts are creative. So whatever, wherever we put our mind, wherever, whatever we're thinking in our mind, we're actually putting energy into that. That's energy. Your thoughts are also energy. <laughs> so, so wherever you put your thoughts or your mind, that is energy. And of course, now we know that energy, you know, our thoughts can create matter. So the mind puts our, where our thoughts put is where we put our energy and that actually creates matter. So our thoughts are extremely powerful. But what's even more powerful than thoughts, of course, are the feelings because if, you know, when people say, oh, the law of attraction is not working, you know, because I'm thinking all these wonderful things, but they're not happening. <clears throat> but, the, but the thing is, it's the feeling that matters. It's not the thinking that matters. The thinking is part of it, but it's, 
It's really having the, the thoughts that create the feelings that you want. So if you have a thought that you want something really, really amazing or really wonderful in your life, but the feeling is that, hmm, I doubt I'll have it. I don't really see how that's possible or, um, you know, maybe what if it doesn't happen or maybe I won't. The universe, the universe obeys all vibration. It absolutely matches all vibration. So if you're putting out the vibe, if your vibration is, but I doubt I'll have it, then the universe says, okay, <laughs> you're, you're, you doubt you have it and then it's not having it. So we can think all we want, but it's the feeling that go with the thoughts that that's what's really critical. So if, if we have a life depleting thought or feeling, if we see something as, as being a threat or something that causes pain, then that actually constricts the energy. So, um, we're in, so in other words, uh, seeing something as a threat or a pain, we could call that low vibration. And it constricts the energy and it actually keeps us less capable of being able to handle a situation. Um, sometimes in my workshops, I have these divining rods and we actually measure energy. And, um, and, if, and if, when I have somebody think a negative thought and I walk towards them with the, with the divining rods, I have to be like right on top of their physical body before the rods show, you know, demonstrate that there's energy. It's, real, it's really interesting. So this is where we might create limitations. And of course, if we think about what the world is, is in right now, we're all, we are perceiving like it is, it is very, really threatening right now. And we might even feel the energy constricted in our body. And, and it's like we might have a feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. So what would be life enhancing is, is to look for what is pleasurable, what is a positive in all this. And whenever we think of seeing something or feel that something is, there's a positive, then that actually frees up our energy. And then it, we're able to create something that is uh, a, at a higher level. We have a, can have a higher quality of life. Another way of looking at this, I've created a scale, you can call it the potentiality scale, but what it means is what we wanna be doing when we are moving to a higher level, we're also expanding how we are. So we're moving into more freedom or liberation or choices as opposed to when we keep ourselves small, we're in limitation and that's where we're seeing things as a threat. So this is the scale from a different perspective. So at the bottom of the scale is where we see things as we're living our lives in limitation. And then um, as we move up the scale, we have a higher level of awareness. So we see more choices. And then of course, the very top, we can step into our real, our full personal power and we really can create whatever it is that we want or we need. And there are certain levels or bridges that you could say to that separate these. And so it can be a real experience crossing from one level to another. So when we're in the lower level or the, or the limitation level, we might find ourselves attacking or defending, uh, judging, uh, justifying, blaming. So these are just some of the our behaviors that we might have if, if we're coming from this level. Uh, and they don't feel helpless, hopeless, like we have, don't have power. Uh, we, there might be, we might feel unworthy, we might have regrets, uh, we might be needy for something. So this, you can see that when we're coming from this, it really is, it's not a really um, po you know, empowered place to be and, and it's not really going to be serving the planet or serving ourselves or helping us get out of this mess. <laughs> So if we move to a higher level, now we start to see, okay, so what are the opportunities? What are the possibilities? And we can take responsibility. We can be accountable um, so that we can get the results we want. So for example, right now, we, we stay in self-isolation. You know, we follow the rules. Um, you know, we do whatever it takes to, to be safe. And we see, we see ourselves here as having choices and that how how we live our lives, it's really, you know, it's up to us, like we have that choice. But it's also like keeping the faith, um, you know, looking for the pause, looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. What, what does it, what will it take to come up, to come through this? 
when we go to the very highest level, then it, it can be really, really challenging to even think or feel anything that's in limitation. So at this level, there's a sense of just absolute peace. Um, just peace no matter what's going on around us. It's just, okay, there's a, so there can be more of a sense of detachment that it's that, okay, it's, um, there's, so there's no, because there's no judgment. Um, there's, there's a love for all humanity, a love for the planet, a love for everything. And this is where we can expect miracles and where miracles can happen. So this is a very high level um, state that we can that we can look to to attain. <clears throat> um, this is one of my favorite quotes. The law of attraction responds to whatever vibration you're sending uh, by giving you more of it, whether it's positive or negative. It simply responds to your vibration. That's Michael Lozier, and he wrote a book called The Law of Attraction. He was one of the first people that ever talked about the law of attraction, and he's been on Oprah Winfrey um, with it as well. So this is, this is really powerful. It's whatever we're vibrating. So obviously the whole world is vibrating with what's going on right now. So, you know, we can, and, and we're at a critical point where it can go one way or the other. So if, if there's enough people, there's something like a critical mass, if there's enough people really focusing on positive outcomes and doing whatever it takes to, um, to move to a higher level, and to protect ourselves physically, as well as emotionally and mentally, then then it's going to it it's, it, it, it can help. There is a, a change formula that can help with all this. So, and again, we talked about <clears throat> your mind. So your mind is your your thoughts. So it can start with the thought. So. Um, let's say that our thought at the moment is is maybe threatening so we see something as a threat and we're might be feeling a little bit helpless or hopeless and you know it's not the greatest it's not it's not a really high level thought so the energy then the emotion that's going through the body is is a stress you know where we're increasing our cortisol levels especially and then that's creating, that can contribute to creating um, a reality. And even if it's for our own physical bodies, our own physical cells, it can be, it can actually lower our immune system. That's what can happen. So if, but if we, so to get into the formula, what we need to do is to create a new neural pathway. And the and of course, most of the neural pathways are, will be in our brain, but they'll also be throughout the body. So what, what this means when we say create a new neural pathway, we talked about how all the cells, the receptors, receive chemicals, certain types of chemicals. So what we need to, and what happens is, it's like when, um, when a chemical goes into a cell receptor, it's like it, it locks into position. And the more we have that thought or feeling, the more we're running that same neural pathway until it becomes locked. And then if we want to change, that can be really challenging. So what we actually have to do is disengage or unprogram. So we talked about the brain being hardwired. We have to disconnect the wiring, so unlock, and then shift to a new neural pathway. And what can happen is because our whole system, our whole energy system is has been is so used to this old pathway it can like go try to go back it's like no but this is the pathway that i know this is familiar this is my reality and so it can be it's a matter of keep disengaging keep unlocking 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 until until finally we can lock into a new neural pathway so one of the ways to do that is when we find ourselves having a thought or a feeling or saying something that is not uh, that is not a high vibration. That is not how we want things to be. You know, that's a worry, uh, for example. Oops. Then there are certain kinds of words we can say to tell the to tell the neural pathways stop that, <laughs> you know, to disengage, unlock. So here's some other words: rewind, erase, cancel, reset. But you can even say, you know, unlock, um, in the, disengage, something to that are that we say, okay. We're letting the neural pathways know, don't, don't even go there. Uh, and, and so that's, that's one step. And then, and then once you've done that, then, okay, 
Now, what is, whatever we're thinking or feeling right now, what's the next highest thought? What would be a higher vibration thought than what we have right now? So let's say my, my thought is that I'm terrified, you know, I'm terrified that, some, that I might get sick. That's my feeling and that's my thought that I'm, I, might get, I might get a virus. Then, okay, well, what the next highest thought for me might be, okay, I can do, I can protect myself. I can, I can take all the precautions necessary. So I am self-isolating. Um, I'm keeping, I'm keeping at least, I'm keeping, I'm actually keeping social distancing from my husband <laughs> because he's the one that does the grocery shopping. So it's like, I don't, I, I'm not taking any chances. I'm social distancing from him. And of course we, we sanitize all of the groceries before, you know, they even come in the house. When he does come in after grocery shopping, he strips down, gets in the shower, washes all his clothes. I, 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 I walk around with a sanitizer, sanitizing everything that he could possibly touch that I might also touch. So, so you know, my next highest thought is I can, I can take care of myself. I can protect myself. I can take safety precautions. And then I feel better. It's like, okay, that's a little bit of a better feeling. And then, okay, is there even a higher thought? All right. Well, the higher thought is, um, yeah, I can survive. I, you know, I can survive this. I can get through this. And um, I and I'm and and I'm really nice and safe in my home, and the world is also taking precautions, and the whole world uh, has you know has really responsible good people in it, and we can and as and we can all come through this together, and then that makes me feel a bit better. And my next highest thought is, well, I'm getting all this opportunity to connect on Zoom with people. I'm actually having more conversations with people than I've ever had before. So it's like, wow, that feels really good. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling really, really connected to people. And that feels really nice because that's a really high vibration. It's like, oh, I just think of all the wonderful people that I know that I get to connect with, you know, on Facebook Live, on Zoom, on, all, on Facebook, you know, whatever it is, on um, FaceTime. So, so that gets me even feeling better. And then I can keep moving to a higher and higher thought. So um, it, so then, so yeah, the, so that's my system. Whenever I'm feeling blah, it's like, okay, <sighs> first of all, breathe it through, reset, unlock. What's, what's my higher, what's a higher vibration thought? Because of course the thoughts are creative. And then the next thing is to speak it. So so, and this is really powerful to do it out loud because when we say things out loud, our whole energy system hears it and also helps to, the positive chemicals to go through. Now, you know, we talk about with, Afri you know, with law of attraction and doing affirmations and we say things like, I am healthy, I am a millionaire, I am super successful, I am an enlightened being, whatever our affirmations are. But again, if we say that and inside, inside it's like, oh, but you know, that, that probably can't happen or there's any doubt, it's not helping. So when we speak, we have to make sure that whatever we're saying, it feels true for us. Like it feels, it feels authentic. So we speak a higher possibility, but we speak it authentically. So for example, I'm in the process of getting healthier every day and and that can be true because if I'm in the process of being healthier every day, I'm doing something, you know, may, I'm, I'm eating healthier every day. I might be taking supplements. I might be exercising. I might be doing something to, to make sure I am being healthier every day. So it might be, so I'm in the process of being healthier every day. And if that feels true, then that's a good thing to say, or I am in the process of being, having, I'm in the process of, um, of making more money, right? And that might, and so does that feel true? Or we could say, I'm the possibility of, I'm the possibility of being in the relation, of being in the, in a fantastic relationship, um, right? Or in my ideal life, I am. So whatever it is that we're saying that we I want, we want it to feel true. So when we speak, it's ideally, we can be speaking about that one thing for, at least three minutes, even one minute helps. But the longer we speak about about how we want things to be, then um, the more powerful it is, the stronger it is, the, st the stronger the vibration, and the more energy we are we are putting into it. 
So when, so by speaking how we want things to be, or speaking our authentic highest feelings and thoughts, we also want to make sure then we get to feel feel that whatever it is that higher feeling that ideally if we're feeling our ideal like we're ideally we're feeling bliss and ecstasy uh if that's a challenge then at least okay well what's the next highest feeling where you know maybe the hot next highest feeling is just okay i feel content or i feel kind of happy that's okay go with it and then as you feel it then you can continue to move to a higher and higher uh, vibration feeling one of the best ways to feel um to feel a higher vibration is through meditation. That seems to be really helping a lot of people because what happens in meditation, if you go into a really nice deep meditation, it actually creates the positive chemicals going through the body, um, including DHEA, which is what lengthens our life. The more DHEA we have in our, in our systems, the longer we live. So, and, and deep meditation has actually shown to, um, to increase that. So this can be, um, yeah, so this can be a very powerful way. So that's the uh, change formula. And another quote from my favorite, Michael Ozier, the speed at which the law of attraction and manifests our desires is in direct proportion to how much we allow and how much we doubt. So the way he says it is, because I've taken his training, it's incredible. Um, if Let's say we have 100% desire for something, our desire is at 100 and if our doubt is at 90, <laughs> we're only left with like 10% manifestation. So, but the thing is, so then what we want to do is like, oh my gosh, acknowledge that 10% manifestation. Like, oh my gosh, look what I'm, look what I'm getting. This is amazing. You know, it might not be the 100%, but I'm getting something. So that's good. So then acknowledge it. So that's where we can have our gratitude journals and 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 say thank you to the universe or whatever it is we thank and just really celebrate like wow look at what i'm manifesting it's 10 percent. now what happens when we see ourselves like oh my gosh i'm so powerful i'm manifesting this then that could actually help decrease the doubt so now maybe the doubt um the doubt gets to 80 percent. so now we're manifesting 20 percent. it's like and again it's like oh my gosh i'm getting even better at this so now we again more celebration more gratitude like more acknowledgement about what we're creating which can lower the doubt even more so ideally if we could get our man our desire at 100 but the doubt to zero then we are 100 percent manifesting whatever it is that our desire our, what we desire so and and the thing is a desire is really from the vibration so it's all about vibration it's about getting the vibration vibrate you know so that we're vibrating with exactly what it is that we want rather than with the doubt about it um or you know or with what we don't want you know because that's why worry is called negative goal setting because what what we worry about that's what we're putting our energy and then that's what we're vibrating with and then that's what we get and that's and that's not helping the other things to watch out for um that, you know in terms of how, how we speak there are some words that we can eliminate uh, like don't not know are three words that we can eliminate because whatever, if we say don't do this, then the, the vibration just hears the, whatever it is, this is, you know, I, or, um, or if we, if we say, you know, if, yeah. So anytime we say don't not or no, we're actually canceling out whatever it is that we, we want. We're focusing on what we don't want. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, uh, that's a little bit about, um, about raising your vibe. And um, <clears throat> so Sonia, we talked about the book. I have the book called Raise Your Vibe. So anybody who's on, um, who's on now can get this book for $10 off the ebook. So it's $7 instead of 17 Canadian. And there is a promo code you can use for anybody to get to do that. So it's only you that get it. And the promo code is ISIM, as in the India School of Image Management. Yes, uh, I have also shared it in the group. So even that everyone would be receiving it on their chat windows by now. Um, yes, uh, it is like, all right, great. So. 
I think this is the session that I wanted, Karen, at this time. <laughs> and just the timing is perfect and the topic is perfect. This is exactly at least I needed for rewire to just rewire everything. And I, um, you know, one of the things that I have taken away is that it's not just the thoughts, you know, what you said was very important to me that it's not just the thought that the law of attraction, we keep coming back and saying that the thought, uh, I'm thinking about it, and I'm, but the law of attraction is not working. So it's also the feelings, you have to like literally feel it and that's where the it will start working for you. And the formula, I think that was just the thing that I needed. <laughs> so yeah, I means thank you so much for this session. And I have tons of questions coming online for you. So should we take some questions on? I think uh, there was one last question, Karen, which was um, from Ashwin. And he has asked, how can we um i'll just pull it up mm -hmm. how to deal with a world which is in constant flux right yeah and i think that was the one i was just talking about that if we can maintain our own peace and calm then and the thing is if we vibrate with the world being in flux <laughs> then guess what the, right so Okay, so if we, can, if we can perceive the world as being in a calm, peaceful, healing state, and that everybody's coming together to heal the planet and for all, the, all of us to move to a higher level, and if we can see the world that way, that will help the world be that way. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, one of the things also that Michael Lozier says is, <clears throat> we don't have to be realistic. We, it's totally okay to be unrealistic. <laughs> Right. So in other words, don't be in the reality, right? Rather than be in the reality, be in the unreality, be in the unreality of, of what, how we want things to be. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's really helpful. Karen, one last question from my end. Uh, I think we have got really wonderful insights and everyone is just loving the thoughts and, you know, the session. People are saying they are in love with, with you. <laughs> I, I can tell them. everybody. <laughs> yes um and uh, one last question from me so i remember uh, in your session just now you said that how can you speak the higher possibility and you mentioned three statements i'm in the process of i'm the possibility of and in my ideal life i am so i want to ask you that Currently, we are going through three most important, like the most common uh, emotions that we are going through. Um, maybe some a little bit more in degree and some a little bit less in degree. But the thoughts, one is fear uh, that everyone is facing. And I understand that you talked a lot about it in the questions also just now and during the session. The second one is confusion, like people are confused or a little bit, uh, you know, not getting a hang of what's going on and the third one is also isolation which we covered but if you can just using these speak the higher possibility and i'm in the process of how okay. would you if you can give us statements for each of these emotions okay so the first thing i would say is everybody listening take a nice deep breath <sighs> and actually when we're ever in we're in a state of fear that's the first thing we want to do is just take a, a breath and imagine we're just letting go of the fear. So the emotion of fear is the opposite of love. So if I'm feeling fear and I'm in a state of fear, then now I want to go to a higher thought than that. Um, so like it could be, okay, I can protect myself. The opposite of fear is love. So we could even go immediately, okay, to what do I love? I love my family. I just have to think about my kids and I feel fantastic. Um, I, you know, I, I, uh, even my little grand dog, Macy, <laughs> you know, I just, so I, I, you know, I think about, I, I think about what it is I love or who I love. And when I'm in a state of love, then there is no fear. Fear cannot exist where there's love. If we can send loving thoughts and loving, like just loving thoughts to every single person and just keep ourselves in a state of love as much as possible, then that really goes a long way. So maybe it could be, I'm the possibility of unconditional love. 
in my ideal love i i love all the planet and i love everyone on the planet and i and the and in my ideal life the world is in a state of love um you know so we can say those kinds of things and just talk about the world being love and healing you know and do that for like three minutes at least up to even 10 minutes right um when it comes to confusion Confusion is actually can be it can be a positive state because when we're in a state of confusion, that means the next step is clarity, <laughs> right? True. And so, <clears throat> and so, what are we? What are we? And so, sometimes it's okay to be confused. Like just again, oh, just breathe through the confusion. And confusion comes from the mind. It's like like this. So okay, just calm the mind. And again, it could be when we go going into a meditative state, that is what could help um, calm the mind. And so then our, our, the way we speak about it could be, I'm the possibility of being calm and I'm the possibility of absolute clarity. And I am the possibility of having the right answers. And, I, and in my ideal life, I am, in, I am clear and I am and I have the answers and I have clarity and I'm in a state of calm and peace, right? So that's how we can handle that might help with that. And the third one you mentioned was isolation. Isolation. Ooh, I'm, I, I'm an introvert. <laughs> I'm actually loving this isolation. <laughs> <laughs> Except I don't get to hug my kids. That's the downside. I don't get to hug people. That's the hard part. Um, isolation. Um, okay, well, here's the, you know, for those of us that are might be on our path of personal development, um, it, this can be an opportunity to get to know ourselves. <laughs> right? So, right, because we're, we, we're our own company now. Um, so it's like, okay, so maybe there's things, Maybe this is an incredible opportunity for personal development where we, like, I'm being serious now, we actually do get to know ourselves. So we might do personal development exercises or, um, you know, work on ourselves, things that maybe on our busy, busy working lives, we haven't had it, an opportunity to do. Or it could also be, um, you know, in isolation. I mean, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm, of course, I've always had my work online, but now I'm getting a, a chance to, really elevate all my online stuff and take it to a whole other level. So, you know, what are the opportunities in isolation? So then in our speaking, we might say, you know, I'm the, I'm the possibility of loving myself. I am the possibility, I have the potential of being my own best friend. Um, I, I, am, I have the potential of, of uh, really knowing myself and elevating myself to a higher level. I mean, there's all kinds of really amazing, positive things we can be saying, um, uh, you know, about the possibilities or opportunities being in isolation. Right. And I, and one of the big pluses I've noticed is that we're really appreciating people now. You know, we're really, and we're getting to know people now. I'm getting to know people better now than I did before, just because we're all available now, you know, and we're all available. We can be on Zoom. I mean, thank goodness. Like that's another thing to be grateful for is our technology that we have that's available to us where, you know, I can be talking to you on the other side of the world. I can give you a hug, group hug. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, that's, that's really wonderful. And I think these statements are going to help not only me, but a lot of us. Uh, I'm already getting comments that, yes, that's a really wonderful one. Actually, the isolation one was like, something which was really great. That's the comment I got from Greena just now. And um, yeah, I think this is these statements. And the minute you start looking and rewiring and looking at different, uh, the situation in a different manner, what is the opposite of this? I think that helps. That actually makes your mind work in a positive direction. So yes, yeah, I think. Because, yeah, yeah. So to go back to like, that I didn't do the, like think about the opposite of isolation is connection. Right. Isn't, right. It, isn't it ironic that we're connecting more <laughs> probably? I, I know that. I mean, that's the case with me. Anyway, I'm connecting with people more than I ever have before in isolation. So, and it's the opposite. So I think all of these that, you know, fear 
with fear, yeah, we can have we can we can have more love. With right. confusion, we can have more clarity. With isolation, we can have more connection. That's I think that's that's what's that's really cool. That's wonderful. I think yeah, yeah. that's you have beautifully summarized that how with each of these thoughts you can just look at what is happening. And that's really true. In fact, I am also, I can totally uh, resonate with what you're saying. Every day to day life, I would just, you know, see my same set of people. But since we are in this lockdown, I am seeing more people virtually every single day. I'm seeing more faces and this knowledge happy hour. I don't think this would have ever happened with our busy lives, with our busy schedule. But now we are just like all coming together and just connecting with people. It's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. And wouldn't it be amazing to keep this going forward? I mean, it doesn't have to be every day, but going forward when this is when we're through this, right. you know, to not to to keep this connection, right? Right. right. I think that's keep very the important. love, keep the clarity, keep the love, mm -hmm. keep the clarity, and keep the um, connection. Mm -hmm. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> um, so uh, let me just quickly check if we have more questions. Just a lot of love for you, Karen. Everyone is just loving the session. So <laughs> um, I don't think we have uh, a lot of questions coming in. No, everyone is just sending you virtual kisses, virtual hugs. A lot of love to you. And this is what was needed. Wonderful session. Well said. Um, yes, amazing session. So a lot of positive things are coming in. And I think this was the need of the hour. We really, really needed it. So thank you so much, Karen, for coming in today, joining us and giving your valuable time to take us through this session. Um, as we said that the session and uh, was on Raise Your Vibe and the book is available to you. We have already shared the code with you all. So yes, if you want to know more about it, you can access the book and um, it is at uh, $10 less. So that is for seven Canadian dollars. So please go ahead and you can, um, you know, buy the book. Uh, the promo code is ISIM. So go ahead and, you know, put it in the card. Um, so yes, thank you so much. And I would also like to, you know, before you go and before uh, we all leave for and uh, start, go ahead with our days and evenings. Um, just a few thoughts, um, if you want to share Karen and, um, then I will share with everyone, what is the session coming in tomorrow and we will kiss. Okay. <laughs> this is, yeah, this has been really nice. Thank you, Sonia, so much for having me, for having me do this. I had a lot of fun. And of course I love spreading this message. So it's, it's really, really valuable and important to me. Um, so I, so thank you for the opportunity of reaching your people. It was an honor having you, Karen, and really, really absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, we will be meeting. So this was the session with Karen Brunjer on Raise Your Vibe. We will be continuing Knowledge Happy Hours every day, 7.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, so you can convert in your time zone. Uh, we are bringing another session, which is very close to what we did and spoke about a lot today. So tomorrow's session is... Uh, will be conducted by Shilpa, if you can see my screen. So we have tomorrow's speaker is Shilpa Shetty and she will be talking about law of attraction. So taking from where Karen started from and she will be, you know, giving you tools, a lot of techniques, something that she uses. So it will be an interesting one. So do come in tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Uh, live. We will see you at same place on Facebook Live tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. And before you all go, virtual hugs and love to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. See you.